Good day! I'm Dr. Tesalonay Capriela. Today, I will be demonstrating how to do lumbar puncture. The most common indication for lumbar puncture in pediatrics is to look for CNS infections such as meningitis or encephalitis. Other indications are for suspected subarachnoid hemorrhage only if CT scan is normal. Diagnosing or ruling out sepsis in the neonatal period. Ensure that there are no contraindications. These include hemodynamic instability, signs of increased intracranial pressure such as focal neurologic deficits or depressed level of consciousness, a bleeding tendency or infection at the site. Other complications are coma, cardiovascular compromise, respiratory compromise, suspected cerebral herniation, and vertebral anomalies. Landmarking is important both for the application of the anesthetic and for performing the procedure itself. Identify the iliac crest on each side of the infant. Place one finger on each crest and trace your fingers together across an imaginary line. This will lead you to the site of the puncture in the midline at about the L3 or L4 level. This is below the end of the spinal cord. You may find it helpful to hold the finger of your non-dominant hand at the space to mark the spot. This will also allow you feel if the child is rotating away from you. From a point of view of a spinal needle, the structures penetrated from superficial to deep are as follows. Skin, subcutaneous connective tissue, supraspinous ligament, interspinous ligament, ligamentum flavum, epidural space, dura mater, and lastly, the subarachnoid space. Prepare the equipments such as reusable or disposable tray, drapes, several containers, gauze, and a few basic instruments often with tubes. Make sure that the tubes is open before you begin to facilitate fillings once you have successfully obtained CSF flow. Open your needle and place it on a tray. For infants, use a 22 gauge 1.5 inch needle. For older children and adolescents, use a longer or larger gauge needles. The helper will hold the hips and shoulders, curling the child in a position to open up the interspinous processes. Clean the site, which should be performed in a circular motion working from the inside out. Clean beyond the area where you will treat with chlorhexidine and betadine. Place your drape so as to create an opening through which everything is sterile. Stabilize your dominant hand on the baby's sacrum and aim towards the umbilicus. You should aim towards the umbilicus so that you can pass between the spinous processes because if you go in perpendicular to the skin, you are much more likely to hit bone. As you move the needle in, you may or may not feel a change in resistance, often called the pop. Periodically take the stylet out and see if there's CSF flow. Once you have flow, collect the fluid in 3 to 4 tubes and if possible, about 1 cm in each tube. After collecting all the samples, reinsert the stylet. Take the needle out and put pressure on the side with gauze, then dispose the sharps. Put a bandage on and tell the family that the child should remain supine for at least 30 minutes to minimize the potential post-op headache. Post-procedural complications of lumbar puncture are cerebral herniation, infection, spinal hematoma, post-spinal headache, back pain, apnea, paresthesias, and epidermoid tumor. Post-procedural cares to prevent injuries. Inform the family that the child should remain supine for at least 30 minutes to minimize the potential post-op headache. Perform further vital sign and neurological observations. Consider use of paracetamol if infant is distressed following procedure. Continue routine monitoring of infant including checking the temperature after the procedure.